Hello everyone, Flandre here. Today, I bought a BTR60. Oh wait, no, that's not a BTR. This is a Czech OT64 Scott. And the reason why I bought this over a BTR60 are manifold, and I'll get into that in a minute. But first, let's have a quick history lesson on the OT64 and compare it to the BTR60. The OT64 is an amphibious 8x8 armored personnel carrier or APC, developed jointly by Poland and Czechoslovakia from 1963 through 1970. It was the answer to the Soviet BTR-60 as the Soviet Union wanted their satellite states to be able to respond in the same manner as the motherland if the need came. Like many of the armaments of Czechoslovakia, they were given much liberty by the Soviet Union to develop their own version of the BTR. Unlike the BTR, the OT-64 has only one diesel 12.7 liter V8 engine mounted in the middle right behind the driver's head, just as God intended. Whereas the BTR has two six-cylinder petrol engines in the rear of the vehicle, the OT-64, by using one diesel engine mounted right behind the driver, it is able to produce as much power as the BTR, but the OT-64 has a much more simple powertrain. And this also diminished the danger of fire and increased the range through better gas mileage. By mounting the engine in the middle, this allowed the vehicle to have doors in the rear, similar to the Russian BMP-1. This made dismounting from the OT-64 easier than on a BTR, especially on the move, as with a BTR, the rear is closed, which requires personnel to exit through angled side doors out of the BTR. The OT-64, on the other hand, allowed personnel to exit through the rear and also to remount through the rear of the vehicle. It also had top doors, which allowed personnel to exit through the top if needed, or to fight from the top if needed. Unlike early versions of the BTR, the OT-64 also has a central tire inflation system that allows the operator to deflate or inflate the tires as needed to traverse different kinds of terrain or mud. I'm gonna go over why I chose this over something like a BTR or a BRDM. And the reason is because Mainly, I would have actually probably have liked to get something like a BRDM or something, uh, but I really wanted something that had a lot of capacity in terms of uh, carrier space and personnel space. And also, of course, I wanted something turreted. Now, you can get the, like, the BRDM uh, like turreted, so I mean, that wasn't really uh, a big factor there, but also because it was available and I didn't really see any BRDMs on the market, as typically Eastern Bloc APCs are fairly difficult to come by. You don't really see these a whole lot on the market. There's not a lot in the United States. The OT-64 was only made in limited numbers, even in Poland and Czechoslovakia at the time that it was manufactured. So you just don't really see a lot of these type of vehicles in the United States. Now, as for choosing this like over a BTR-60, the main advantage that this has over that is actually its size. It's also uh, like a, I think it's like a foot thinner. Uh, the BTR-60, if you have to transport it, you have to transport it actually as a wide load. And that's very expensive to transport around places. You can't just load it up and be like, hey, I can just drive this to a game or something like that. You actually have to uh, declare as a wide load when you put it onto a trailer and take it take it over anywhere. Whereas the OT64 is actually uh, just 8 point, I think it's like 8.4 feet uh, wide, which is just under the limit that you don't have to declare it as a wide load. You can also technically drive this thing on the road. This thing actually has a fucking title. I'm not kidding with you. This thing actually has a title. And I could take it to the DMV in fact, the previous owner had a license plate for it and everything. Uh, I had put this on 
insurance, like Haggerty does insurance for these kind of vehicles, I could then go take the title to the DMV and I could register it and actually put a plate on it and drive it on the road if I really felt like it. Now, would I? I don't know. <laughs> um, this thing has virtually no visibility. This here is the cat or the cabin here. And I mean, look at that. That's where your head sits. And you have a side window there. You have your front window there with a hilariously small window wiper. Yeah, the mirrors on these were added. You can see that they are some kind of aftermarket mirror that was added after the fact for compliance to make it street legal in the United States. It does have working blinkers. The original OT64s did have blinkers, I believe. There is, in fact, buttons on the inside for it and everything, original buttons. So I could go ahead and register this thing and drive it on the road. But I don't really want it to break down driving longer distances. And I certainly don't want to drive on the road with that kind of visibility. And let me tell you, this thing has a learning curve to drive. And it's, it's a little difficult to drive. Uh, it's not like your tra traditional manual. I drive manuals all day. I drive manuals every day. All my cars are manual transmission. But this thing, <laughs> I feel like I'm learning manual all over again because it's just so different. It's a pre-select uh, Wilson transmission, uh, which means it has a system of you select the gear first and then you press in the clutch, or they call it a gear selector. And then it changes gear when you press in the clutch after you've already shifted into gear. So that's a little strange, but on a, like, uh, if you're going low speeds and you're just kind of cruising along and you're just driving, you know, uh, on your property, I mean, it's great. It drives great. Um, as long as you're just going kind of slow, it, you can drive it just fine. And that's pretty much what I'm just going to be using it for. Probably not going to use anything more than like second gear. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I haven't really even used anything more than first gear. Uh, so far when I've driven it. So uh, that in reverse. Um, it's got uh, seven gears. Uh, there's also high and low gear uh, shifter. So you have two shifters, basically one to switch it from low gear, one to switch it to high gear. And that's pretty interesting. Let's kind of go around it. I have the hatch open up here. These open up from the top. And here's the inside. As you can see here, there's where the passengers would sit. Now this vehicle was originally a comms unit. You can see here there are some antennas that can go on the top or right here rather. Those can attach to the top. There's some antennas for that. And there was comm equipment that would have been originally seated in here. In the passenger version, uh, they would just have seats over these pads here. You can see out here this really big antenna that's on the side here. Some neat features about this is they have all these little hatches here that you can open up. And that is for putting gun barrels through so that you can shoot out of them. Coming into the vehicle. You can see here the hatch is open. And once again, I can go ahead and take this, open it up. And now you can put a VZ58 through that and shoot away. Of course, we have our turret itself. And it's getting a little dark out here, but here is the actual, let me get some light on it here. Here is the turret. So we have different stuff we can use here to manipulate and move this turret around, to change elevation and also to spin it around. I'll go over all the controls in another video. This is just going to be a quick overview of everything.
here's a seat that you would sit in and you can operate it uh, using the different controls within here. It's got some lights here for letting troops know when to de deploy. The troops themselves can actually tell the driver when they're going to deploy too. They can flip these and that'll actually trigger a light inside of the driver's compartment. Coming back to the turret really quick, behind this hatch here is the actual engine. It's a 12.7 liter air-cooled V8 back there. Down here, there's a compartment for the transmission that you can open up and access the transmission through. This is an eight by eight vehicle, so all eight wheels can actually uh, turn. There's a differential on each axle. So now let's crawl into this thing. We open it up like this. Okay. And these doors are heavy, let me tell you. Let's crawl inside. Got some step here for my foot. Can get it on there. And I can grab up here. Oh, there we go. Let's get inside here. In the future, I'll be making more videos on different features and things this vehicle can do and the different projects I have planned out for this vehicle. So I hope you all found this informative. I'm certainly going to have a lot of fun with this thing. And you all will see me in the next one. So as always, have a good one. Oh, oh.